Often students in calculus at this point will start to ask questions about different integration rules. And one common question we get is, do we have a product rule for integration? Because often we'll have a product like x times sine of x that we need to take the integral of. And it, we don't have any formula that does it straightforward. So it would be nice if we had some type of product rule for integration. And the answer is maybe we don't exactly have a product rule, but we have something that's close to the product rule that we're going to call integration by parts. The idea here is if I have a product, let's say f of x times g of x, and we'll just say that's equal to our h of x. And if I were to take the derivative of both sides, we would get, using the product rule of derivatives, the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second is equal to our derivative. Now let's try and go backwards here, just for the sake of going backwards. Let's take the integral of both sides. So if we took the integral of both sides on the left, we would have the integral of f prime of x gx dx plus the integral of f of x g prime of x dx is equal to the antiderivative of h prime. And the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us that's just h of x. But from the beginning, we know h of x is really just f of x times g of x. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to subtract this first term across. We're going to subtract f, the integral of f prime of x g of x dx from both sides. Ultimately, what we're trying to do is we're solving to get this middle integral alone. So when we do that, subtracting off, we're just left with on the left the integral of f of x times g prime of x dx is equal to our f of x g of x minus the integral of f prime of x g of x dx. From here, we're going to make a little bit of a substitution. We're going to see what happens when I let u equal my regular function f of x. So this first part is going to become u. And then we're going to have this other thing. I'm going to call it dv equal to the rest of it, the g prime of x dx. Well, we've got a lot of other pieces. So I'm also going to find du and regular v. du is the derivative of u. So that's f prime of x dx. And v, that's the antiderivative of dv. And the antiderivative of g prime we know is just g of x. So when we put this together, we now have the integral of u dv is equal to f of x. But f of x we know is u. And g of x we know is v. So we'll say uv minus the integral. And if we look, we've got f prime dx. f prime dx is just du. And the g of x is just v. So we have the integral of v du. And so this integral becomes our formula, though it may not look like much right now, becomes our formula for integration by parts to break up the product rule. The integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus v, the integral of v du. And the idea here is we're going to have some product, some integral u dv that we cannot take the antiderivative of. Using this substitution, we'll end up with an integral that hopefully will be simpler 
that we can take the antiderivative of, which is v du. Let's see what this looks like with some examples. We'll keep the formula up on top as we do our first example here. Let's find, I referred to it earlier, the integral of x sine of x dx. Now, under normal situations, we wouldn't be able to find this antiderivative. But if we break it up into the piece that is u and the dv, let's let x be the u and the rest of it, sine x dx, be the dv. Then we can find the derivative of u. The derivative of x is just dx. And we're also missing the v from our formula. v is the antiderivative of dv. The antiderivative of sine x is negative cosine of x. Once we've identified these pieces, we can plug them into our integral. The problem at, to at the top should be our original integral, the integral of u dv, the integral of x, the integral of x times sine dx. Notice that's all in the top row. That's equal to u times v. u is x, v is negative cosine x, minus the integral of v, which is negative cosine. I'm going to pull the negative out, du. Notice when we set this up, the top row is our original problem. The bottom row is the integral we solve. Because now, keeping the x cosine of x by itself, plus we know the antiderivative of cosine is sine plus a constant. And now we've got our integral of x sine x to be x negative x cosine x plus the sine of x plus a constant. And that's how we break up our integration by parts. The big question to make integration by parts work, though, I'll put this over to the side here, number two, is how do we decide what is the u? Because if we get the u and the dv backwards, the equation does not become simpler. If you want to see that work out in practice, go ahead and try that previous problem where you make the u sine of x and the dv x dx. And you'll see you'll end up with a much more complex integral. So how do we decide which part is the u? Well, a little acronym to help you think about it is the acronym ILATE. If you can keep in mind this acronym I late, it gives you the order that it is generally recommended you just go through to pick which piece is the U. First, if you see any inverse trig, that's your U. If you still don't have a U, the next thing you'll look for is do you have any logs, usually natural logs. Those are going to be what your U is. If there's no logs, you're looking for algebra. Those are like any x to the n's, any polynomials. If there's no algebra, we'll look to making the trig, sines, cosines, and tangents. If not, we'll look towards the exponentials. Exponentials are like e to the x or 2 to the x. And we use that hierarchy to help us to decide which piece is the u. So for example, if I were asked to find the integral of x e to the 2x dx, first I see there's no inverse trig or logs, but I do see algebra in x to the n, specifically in x to the first power. So u is x, dv is the rest, e to the 2x dx. For our du, we take the derivative of x, which is dx. For our v, we take the antiderivative of e to the 2x, which is 1 half e to the 2x. Then we plug into our formula. Remember, our formula is the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. 
multiplying, we've got 1 half x e to the 2x. That's our u times v minus the integral. And remember, the integral is going to be our bottom row. Let's pull the constant of 1 half out, e to the 2x dx. And now I just solve this last integral, 1 half x e to the 2x minus 1 half times the antiderivative of e to the 2x is 1 half e to the 2x plus a constant. Or simplifying, just multiplying the 1 half times 1 half, we'll have 1 half x e to the 2x minus 1 fourth e to the 2x plus a constant. And we found our antiderivative. Should have been number two, number three. Number two was the i late. Number four, then, let's try another example. Let's find the integral of x squared sine of x dx. Again, going through i late, we see that the algebra comes before trigs. So u is the algebra, x squared. dv is the rest, the sine x dx. du is equal to the derivative, 2x dx. v is the antiderivative, which is negative cosine of x. And now we go to our formula. Multiplying u times v is negative x squared cosine x minus the integral of the bottom row. Negative cosine, bring the negative out. And I'm going to bring the 2 out as well. So we have x cosine x dx. However, we find ourselves in another situation that we can't take the integral of x cosine x. There's nothing, though, that prevents us from doing integration by parts twice. Let's do it again on this remaining piece. Again, algebra comes before trig in i late. So x and cosine x dx. du is the derivative of x dx. v is the antiderivative of cosine, which is sine of x. And so we still have our first term. Don't lose that first term from the first time, negative x squared cosine x plus 2 times also, don't lose the plus 2. Now we have our integral. u times v is x sine of x. And the bottom row becomes our integral minus the integral of sine x dx. And now that integral is really easy to take. So looking at what we've got, the whole thing, negative x squared cosine x plus 2 times x sine of x minus the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. So we'll do plus cosine x. And I'm just going to distribute that 2 through to spread it out. Negative x squared cosine x plus 2x sine of x plus 2 cosines of x plus our constant, not forgetting that plus c. It should have been on the previous step as well. So sometimes we have to use this integration by parts trick two, three, four, five times until we get down to something we can take the antiderivative of. Let's take a look at another example that gives us quite an interesting result. Let's take the integral of e to the x times sine x dx. Going through i late, the trig comes first before the exponentials. So u is equal to sine x du, or dv, sorry, is e to the x dx. Our derivative of u then, the derivative of sine, is cosine of x. The antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. And so we end up with u times v, e to the x sine x minus the integral of v du, the bottom row, 
e to the x cosine x. Oop, forgot my dx. Don't lose your dx. Well, the problem here is we can't take the antiderivative there either. So like the previous problem, why don't we do integration by parts again? Still, trig comes before the exponential. So u is the cosine of x. dv is the rest, e to the x dx. du then is the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine of x. v is the antiderivative of e to the x, which is still e to the x. Keeping everything we've got before, e to the x sine x minus u times v is e to the x cosine of x minus the integral of v du. Ooh, I lost my dx again. Uh, it becomes, let's pull the negative out, e to the x sine x dx. And I'm going to go ahead and distribute this negative through so we can see where we're at completely. e to the x sine x minus e to the x cosine x minus the integral of e to the x sine x dx. Well, again, we find ourselves with an integral that we cannot take. However, before we jump right back into integration by parts again, we should notice something interesting. The integral that we've ended up with is the exact same integral as the original problem. Remember, this whole expression is equal to the original problem, equal to the integral of e to the x sine x dx. It's equal to the original problem. So let's solve for that piece, that original problem piece. To get that integral all on one side, we're going to add it to the other side. That's going to give us e to the x sine x minus e to the x cosine x equals 2 times the integral of e to the x sine x dx. As so we add anything to itself, we get two of them. Remember, that thing is what we're trying to solve for. We've got a 2 in the way. So what I'm going to do, I'll Use brown now. We'll multiply by 1 half on both sides. That way the 2's are gone. And what we end up with is, on the right, that the integral of e to the x sine x dx, which is the original problem, that's what we're looking for, is equal to 1 half times e to the x sine x minus e to the x cosine of x. Don't forget, we still need to do plus a constant. We'll do the plus the c on the left. There's no reason it can't be on the left. But we end up with our final integral by doing integration by parts twice. And then we noticed, hey, we've got the original problem as part of our developing answer. So we can solve for that piece to find out what that piece is actually equal to. Quite a clever trick. Now, integration by parts centers on this original formula that we saw on the beginning. The integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. Most of our problems will work out that way. However, if special cases come up, we can use what is often called the tic-tac-toe method, also called the Tableau method, which we can only use if the problem only has the last part of I late, the ATE. In fact, we can only use it if we've got the A along with either T or E, if we've got algebra hanging out with trig or exponentials. If we have algebra hanging out with trigs and exponentials, we can use this thing called the tic-tac-toe method to save us some work. If I want the integral of x to the fourth sine of x dx, notice x to the fourth, that's the algebra that we need. 
and the rest is trig, either trig or exponentials. This is when we will use the, the Tableau method or the tic-tac-toe method. To do this method, we'll set up one column for derivatives and one column for antiderivatives or integrals. The derivatives, as you would expect, is going to be the polynomial part, x to the fourth. And then what we're going to do is we're going to work our way down taking derivatives of x to the fourth until we end up with 0. We have 4x cubed, 12x squared, 24x, 24, and finally 0. Then we'll work through the integrals with the other part, the sine of x. The antiderivative of sine of x is negative cosine of x. Notice I'm lining up my rows. The antiderivative of negative cosine is negative sine. The antiderivative of negative sine is cosine. The antiderivative of cosine is sine. And the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. Next, what we'll do is we will connect diagonal rows through this table. And we'll start with a positive and start switching signs, negative, positive, negative, positive. And what this table will do, or this little tic-tac-toe grid will do, is it helps us actually build the entire final answer. We're going to multiply times the diagonals. So this first diagonal, we've got a x to the fourth times a, whoop, we got a plus and a negative. A positive times a negative is a negative. So we've got x to the fourth times the cosine of x. Then the next diagonal is a negative, but we've got a negative negative, so that's going to make it a positive. 4x cubed sine of x. Then we've got a positive 12x squared times the cosine of x. Then we've got a negative 24x times the sine of x. And we have a positive times a negative, which makes it negative. 24 times the cosine of x plus our constant. And this is the antiderivative of x to the fourth sine x dx. Without the tic-tac-toe method using traditional integration by parts, we would have had to done parts four times to get down to our final answer. And then make sure we don't make any errors with signs or distributing. Would have been a headache. But the tic-tac-toe method helps us simplify when we've got an algebraic expression with either trig or exponentials. Don't use this shortcut unless you're allowed to. If you're not allowed to, we have to use the traditional integration by parts rule. So try some of these on the homework assignment. Get really good at practicing these. And we'll talk about parts more in class.